I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying out this new little RPG headset. Um, it is really rocking. It is so, it's so real. You can almost feel the blows. Um, I, I got to turn this off. Give me a second. Um, it, it's just, it's really overwhelming sometimes just how fast the, the infuriates the fighting can get. Um, I have to set it on like a low mode to be able to, to focus. So if we can do it like this, maybe I can get through the show with just a little bit of a, a lighter style, you know, game going on as I'm doing this. So as we're going, if I if I get knocked out, forgive me. I am trying something here new. Uh, anyway, hi, I'm Ray. Uh, <laughs> welcome to W Ray RP in New Concord, Ohio, uh, the new Lit RPG audiobook podcast. Again, like I say, I'm Ray, and I'll be reviewing some recent and classic Lit RPG audiobooks for you. In keeping with the last show, I'm trying to keep things shorter and not get into long diatribes. I'm trying to crank stuff out as we go. I know I'll get off into tangents anyway, so I've really just kind of condensed everything down. I want to see like the new format for me, rather than me just going on and on and on about something, if I can just kind of condense a little bit. You can see I'm talking faster, and that's what I was doing last time. I was trying to keep it nice and tight and fast and flowing, so that's what I'm doing. So anyway, welcome to the world of pure imagination. I can't wait. Let's get this party started. All right, so here we go. First up. Koala Online by Max Geek, Marcus Sloss, narrated by Zane Van Wicklin, with book length of a mere five hours and 53 minutes. The female shriek said, No way! Unbelievable! We tested! We tried! There was a foolproof... How? I... You were confusing me. Let me start by saying I am a huge fan. I have watched all the... I paused when Morgan Freeman morphed into a humanoid robot with pink LED accents. Oh, how the tides had turned. I shrieked like a little Joey fearful of his life. I ran around in circles until anger overtook my fright. You killed Morgan Freeman and stole his skin! What kind of devil are you? My clawed fingers lashed out in anger. I gasped when my attack passed through the vile being. Die! You will feel my wrath, spawn of Satan! Morgan Freeman died a few years ago. I used his image for my likeness as tribute. The lady robot said, transitioning from kneeling to sitting. Unbelievable! What even are you? So this is a book I've actually finished a while back. I mean, it was really short. I got into it, got it done, and I kind of set it back to get to for another show. I had something else in mind. Never got to it, so I'm sorry I just kept pushing it back and back to the back burner for various reasons. This is exactly the kind of book I like. It's light, it's punchy, it has some slick references snuck in for observer listeners or readers. Um, it has a nice short runtime of just under six hours, and that's a bonus since I think the story really works best in a short format. I mean, it's got to be short for this to go because if it was just longer, it wouldn't have worked quite so well. I think it would have been weakened and it would have just drug out and it wouldn't have been as quick and fun otherwise. So keeping it short was the smarter move. Uh, the story is fun, well-paced, and it's damned original. Uh, I guarantee you won't have read anything like this before. Uh, it does center on a koala who is not from the wilds and is shunned by those who are. He's more of a homegrown kind of koala. Uh, my only issue with the book is it takes a little bit of time to get into the lit aspects of, the, of everything. Um, it took a little bit longer than what I would have cared for, but it's a short book, so you, know, you can kind of overlook it a little bit, especially with the crazy, silly... Um, funness of the story itself um now here this is my this is my simon cowell imitation aspect whatever you want to call it coming to the fore uh zane van wicklin does a really good job narrating the story uh and his voice and style fit the character and the tale pretty much as much as you could ask pretty well uh but i can't say these flawless are completely smooth i think there's still some hiccups and bumps that he's working on as he goes through life and he's doing this um it's very it's very clear he wants to be a narrator and he wants to be a really good one i think he will achieve that given time um he's got a way to go yet uh but this, just that said he's better than a lot of the ones i've heard who've been doing this for years so there is that. Um, he took a little bit of time for me to get him used to, uh, but he, like I say, he fits this insane story, um, you know, to, to such a to such a T that that I don't think that a, an adult or an adult voice 
could have pulled, pulled this off as well as he does. I think that his style and the way he speaks and it, the, the, the very youngness, the youth in his voice really comes out and says, hi, I'm a koala. It's, it's like, almost like watching, you know, an animated movie, you know, from Disney or Pixar or something. And this would be the voice they would pick for the koala. Okay. Uh, my final score, see, I told you, going to be short. I'm really trying to trim these things down. I'm trying to keep them to like five minutes at most. Final score is 7.7. .7. It ain't deep and dark. It is life and fluffy. Life and fluffy. It's light and fluffy, which is enough to carry me through a day. Um, so, you know, if you need something quick to dip into that's full of silliness and absurdity, this will work really well for you. It's kind of like Money Python, but for kids. I mean, it's just that kind of wacky craziness that goes into it. So I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, again, I think the shorter format worked well for it. It's a 7.7. .7. Um, it didn't knock my socks off or make me go wild. I mean, it was an original story. It was an original idea. It was really good. But it didn't knock me out of the water. And went, Holy cow, that was just so, so amazingly creative. It was a good, fun little romp, and that's what it was meant to be. So go eat a eucalyptus leaf and have some fun. <sighs> okay, here is one I've got. I've, I've got to do it. I've got to do a rant. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it short. Um, this one is called Pickle Pie, a cyberpunk story or cyber pink story as it's now been changed to uh, the title and the genre setting has changed numerous times and I'll get into that a little bit here it's by George Saludis uh, narrated by Luke Ronda and it's, the series is called Cyber Pink which is book one uh, and it's got a book length of 4 hours and 26 minutes and if you compound those minutes and seconds where you, you ever see the Star Trek movie Wrath of Khan where he says the hours will seem like days, and the days, you know, and he's like, well, how long will it be? Like four days and 27 hours. So, you know, the minutes are hours and the days are, so, so he tricks the con into thinking it's going to be a long thing where it's only like a four hour repair. This is the exact opposite. This is it. Four hours seems like days. Patty got hit, and her body paralyzed completely. She hated getting hit. And that stupid longsword offered no protection at all. She preferred sword and shield, having something to block with, something to cover her body. But the stupid coach forced her to use this useless weapon. One pinup girl is down and it seems like more are about to go the same way, the commentator said. The opponent who got her with her own longsword, Echidna was her name, went on to tear through one more teammate, then her quick. Oh, she blocked all right, both arms together covering her body, but the force of the blow made her stumble backwards, and it opened her up for another player, Hydra. Hydra was a chain and could reach far, so all she needed was an opening. She went for it, her cyber arm a bunch of snakes writhing on her side, extending like a whip, jaws snapping. Quick went down too, bleeding. All right, so... I'm only going to discuss this book solely because there are points throughout its history where I have seen it listed as being a lit RPG story. Let me start by saying this is not lit RPG. I have read several of George's books and I've enjoyed most of them. Um, you know, for example, I really like his story. It's called You Have Too Many Friends. Okay. Really good story. Uh, and he did a story called The Halloween Raid, which I reviewed here, which was a game-lit short story. So I cut him some slack because he didn't get into a lot of crunch. But it was a game-lit story uh, that I thought was decent. I enjoyed it, and it was a good thing for Halloween. And I think that that story sold well enough that he took a pickle here and rebrandished it as being lit just because he thinks that, like, everybody who does this is an idiot they don't know what lit RPG is, so if you just call it lit RPG, it becomes lit RPG. For example, he sends out newsletters, and then in the first newsletter I got, it said, here's my new story, Pickle Pie, a lit RPG story. I got it, listened to it, and I was like, this is not lit, and I just, I just set it aside. I said, you know what, I won't review this, I won't do it, but, but, but. But, this is a big but, so i got to say this really big, okay? It's big. But, I have seen it on other sites where it is listed now as a lit RPG 
story again. And it fluctuates because sometimes it's a cyberpunk tale and sometimes it's a lit RPG. There is still one place. I'm not going to say where it is because I'm not going to direct anybody to get this thing. I don't want it. Don't want you to get it. But you can go there. If you want the story, look him up. He's got a website. He'll, I'm sure he'll send you a code for the freaking book because he wants somebody to review it. And I'm not going to do it. This will never see the light of day. Oh, well, maybe it will. Maybe I'm just so PO'd and how crappy a job that he did doing this um, that I, I will post this because I don't care. I will cut ties with the guy. I mean, I'm not in love with him. I'm not like a big, huge fan of his. So if I never read another story of his, I'm not going to be sad. Um, you know, so I, you know, I don't even need to worry about that. I, and I just usually try not to do this to, to avoid hard feelings, but I think the world needs to know it's not lit RPG and it's still being right now. It's in a, in a section that is made specifically for lit RPG. Okay. Now it's called cyberpunk, And that's because he's trying to do a play on, I guess the modern, um, atmosphere where you know you're trying to do like women's rights and lip, women's lib and all that stuff um and however you want to turn it I, I live in a really small town we don't have anything happening like this like it's in the rest of the country it's really weird um so i'm not sure of the right terminology or how to phrase things sometimes um but instead of it being uh, uh let me just put it like this it's about slave women cyborgs who play a game i'll get into all that but they uh I guess because it's empowering to women, it's going to be a cyber pink story. So that's what that's changed over for that. Okay, so it wasn't good enough for me a cyberpunk, and it wasn't good enough to be a lit RPG. Now it's a cyber pink story, and he's not got one but two. The second one, as I understand it, which I have not read, is a really erotic story. This one here has elements like that as well. And but you know, like if you're looking for harem, this ain't it. Um, if you're looking for really good um, naughty bits, this ain't it. Uh, it's just a weird little story that I would have said, you know what, it's it's a little off, then it's okay. It, it, nothing amazing to me, um, but I just I just do not want to go into anything else about it, okay? Um, so, you know, it, it's even been listed on Audible, just so you know, on Audible as a lit RPG book at one point. Uh, in the title it says, like, a lit RPG thing. Um, so it's been like four or five spots where I've seen it, and I've wanted to talk about this for some time. I'm just now getting around to it. I don't know what it is. I think the other day I saw it and I just snapped. I'm like, you know what? I got to put a stop to this right now. And I hate talking bad about people. I really do. I hate it. But this comes off. But these are the facts. Okay. It comes across like um, George is somebody trying to sell a bicycle, but he's calling it a motorcycle. It, that's, you know, shape and form is there, but there's no comparison between the two. None. Okay. And I think Halloween, Halloween, Halloween raid did well enough. He figured he could just switch genres alone and that would sell it. Maybe it did, but it shouldn't have. Because if you're a lit RPG fan and you've read this and you're like, what the hell? Trust me, I'm there with you. I All for it. I don't understand it either. Um, I'm not even going to talk about narration. There is absolutely no point because I'm not going to talk about the story. The story is simple. It's not genius. It's not overwhelmingly original. It's just a nice little tiny tale of a woman who gets bought by somebody to fight in an arena, sort of roller derby style stuff. And what happens between them and everything else is just part of the story. It's not a huge story. It's not a long story. Like you say, it's it's very short in time. It's just not lit RPG. And that he continues to go back and call it this really irritates me. Um, this seems like a money grab, uh, you know, or a right for cash kind of thing. But he didn't even do that because. If it was right for cash, he would have read and researched some lit RPG stuff. Clearly, he knows a little bit to call like the Halloween raid game lit, but this is nowhere near lit RPG. Okay, um, you, you know my rating system. You know, one point you got a story. Okay, it's cohesive. Two points you got characters. Yep, there's characters. Three points. Um, there has to be actually some sort of drama or tenseness, yes. Four points. I'm just going to say four points. I, he's met a lot of the criteria I have for a minimum story. Um, so my, my final score is four stars. It's not lit RPG. It's mediocre cyberpunk at best. Is it worth your time if you like cyberpunk? Maybe. I don't know if you like it or not. It, it was not something that really held my attention or kept me wrapped or, you know, I had to keep, I like, I literally had to set it down every couple hours 
and it's only four hours long, so maybe it wasn't really every couple hours. Maybe it was like every other half hour I'd put it away for a little while and come back to it. When I first got this, like a year ago, okay, it's been a long time since I've gotten this. Um, it was not engrossing at all. None. None of it, not one bit was engrossing. It did not make me want to continue the next story at all. Okay, so four stars, that's me being kind and generous because there is writing involved. There was a story and so on and so forth. But is it worth your time, your effort, or your money? No. Not even slightly. Don't bother with it. Thank you. My rant is done. Okay, so next up is Hunter's Dream Online Ascension uh, by Jamie or J.R. Davis, uh, narrated by Steve Campbell. Okay, seven hours and 35 minutes length of listening. After scrounging out for nearly a year, I finally had enough money to get this damn Remtech visor for the release. It ain't always easy being a broke college student, but I have my ways. The thing was damn near twice the price of the other systems out there, but for this kind of immersion, it was worth it. Ever since high school, I've wanted to really experience that whole fantasy world deal. The fighting giant monsters, bursting other players. Hell, even just being in another world seemed like a dream. When I found out about Hunter's Dream Online, it drew me in like a moth to a flame. Fortunately, the release date lined up with my school's fall break, so I have that going for me, which is nice. After a quick trip to our local gaming store, you know the one, I was back home, setting up and ready to rock. While it was doing its initial booting up, I skimmed the information packet that came with it. The last thing I needed was to be trapped in some damn virtual world or have my brain fried. Whoa. I mean, you want to talk about the dream team? We have the amazing Jamie Davis of the Accidental series, you know, the Accidental Thief and the Accidental Warrior and the Accidental that guy and the accidental, you know, musketeer. I can't remember the, the, the whole thing, but like the, the daughter comes in and she does, I can't remember the name of the titles right off the top of my head now, um, but they do a whole thing on, on the main hero for the first trilogy's daughter. Um, he, he just comes in and knocks us out of the park. And then you combine that with the velvety vocal stylings of Steve Campbell. I mean, what is there not to like about this book? Honestly, I looked and couldn't find a thing. I loved it. I enjoyed it. The story is basically what feels like a weekend get-together with some of your old friends that you haven't seen in a while. What do I mean by that? I mean, you just kind of get to chill and relax and enjoy yourself listening to the story without all the work of having to build a relationship. I mean, it kind of comes together pretty quickly. In the book, that's what happens there. I mean, the characters just kind of fall into this group it's real quick, but it's very easy going. It's very easy, you know, very, very much a nice hey, we just kind of did this, can we go with the flow kind of thing? And it worked really, really well. Um, the book is humorous, it's punny, it's well-written and paced, it has interesting characters. The book is not crunch-heavy, okay? Just so you know it, it's not full of crunch, but you're still full of all the gaming stuff and the gaming satisfaction. Um, the MC Robin, opts to be a necromancer, and that class uh, interpretation by Davis is a blast. I really had a fun time seeing what he did with that the whole team dynamic works even though they don't really know much about each other the real issue here in the book is the griefers who do their best to make everybody's lives miserable so you get like team fight individual fight and you get like the overall arching we're going to crush this whole thing kind of fight it works it's it really does work uh, personally i think this is an amazing start to a great new series I'm wondering why we don't have book two out yet on Audible. If we do, I, don't, I missed it. I don't know. Um, I picked this one up just because I said, you know what, it's, it's Steve Campbell and, and Jamie Davis. Um, and, and like I say, the, two of the nicest guys you will ever deal with in this community. I mean, Jamie is is amazing. I've met him personally. He, he's probably the first person in the community I ever met live and in person. Um, we were at Delaware, and we were doing the, the, the Dover Comic Con. Uh, I was there as a, as a visitor with my kids and we ran into Jamie. I'm like, holy crap, it's Jamie Davis. Um, and Steve Campbell is just this amazing narrator who like, he's the friendliest cat. He is the most helpful guy. I mean, I know he helps writers in the genre. I know that he, he really works in this community of ours. Awesome dude. I mean, so like, I just think that the, the melding of these two, like for example, for me, 
Um, I, I bemoan the fact that uh, Jamie and Roberto Scarlato, another one of my favorite off narrators, um, haven't gotten back together. Like Roberto did the first accidental series, um, and he didn't do the second because it was more a female centric lead. Uh, but if I don't get Roberto back, I can at least say I have Steve Campbell, and and it, 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 he just carries his story, man. I mean, he's amazing. So Steve busts his butt to bring us an intensely humorous and exciting tale with easily recognized vocal characters. I really feel like I never do Steve Campbell justice that he deserves, ever. Anytime I sit down to do this, I can say, well, Jeff Hayes is my favorite narrator, and, you know, uh, there's Annalise Rennie, and then, then there's uh, Andrea Parr Snow, and, and I have, you know, this, and, and I, I don't know why, like, Steve is not, like, one of my top, boom, let's get right to it, because he's he does a lot of series that I've loved, um, and I know he's really huge in the community. He comes out there and he, he sits down and talks to everybody and does everything all the time. And, and why I don't like just like say this dude is one hell of a guy, uh, I don't know. I really should. Uh, and secondly, he really has a knack uh, for narrating that I think about one in a thousand narrators really only actually have. I mean, the guy is a boss level narrator. Here, he shows you that fact. So, if I say Steve Campbell in the future, and you've seen this review, you know what I'm talking about. I love Steve. He's a great guy. Give this book a shot. Final score, 8.4 stars. It might be over seven hours long, but it feels a lot faster. It goes through really quick. I mean, you're like, what the crap? Where did this go? How did this happen? Why is it done? Why don't I have the next book in my hand? That's how you feel. So, you know, like I say... It, Good choices, good writing, good narration, good times, good times. It's like I say, it's like a familiar old friend that you've never met before. And you just go, that was our perfect little little story and great characters. So check this one out. I really recommend it. Okay. This should be the final book for the day. I've, I've got a lot to do. I'm really trying to get things done. That's a lot of the reason why I'm cutting these down to shorter stories to begin with. I just don't have time anymore. I mean, like, literally, the more I try to get stuff done, the less time I have. I seriously, I, I worked from 5 a.m. on, was it Wednesday or Thursday? I don't know. It's, it's Saturday now. 5 a.m. and until it was 11.30 that night, and I didn't get home until almost 2 o'clock in the morning, technically. So even though I got done working around 11.30, I still didn't make it back home and to go to bed. I didn't even get to eat dinner that day. So... <laughs> I'm trying real hard to get this show out for you all. You just don't know. I'm trying to get a lot of stuff accomplished. It's very difficult. So I'm doing everything I can as quickly as I can to accommodate. Because I love my audience. I love the people here. love the community. I want to share. So with that being said, the next book in this review section is, that's right, Viridian Gate Online, Darkling Siege by James Hunter. Narrated by Armin Taylor. With a book length of 15 hours and 47 minutes. The floorboards were heavily stained and covered in a loose layer of dirty golden brown straw meant to absorb the slush and mud from the wet roadways. I'd seen the same setup in just about every bar, tavern, and inn I'd visited over the past few hours. A brunette imperial woman in an incredibly sheer gown swayed on a cramped stage singing an upbeat drinking melody while a thick-set imperial man accompanied her on a worn fiddle. Rough-hewn tables filled most of the bar, and those tables were packed with bargoers and patrons looking to escape the cold, get a hot bite to eat, or gamble away whatever money had recently found its way into their pockets. There was a lot of the latter going on. Men and women, though mostly men, packed in around tables where dice rattled, cards slapped, and coins clinked as they exchanged hands. We finally hit the penultimate chapter in the VGO saga, and things are looking really uh, grim for Jack. Grim Jack? Looking grim for Jack and company. Uh, the book opens and closes on very different notes. There are night and day. Uh, it illustrates just how quickly life and circumstances can change in just a few short hours or a day or so. Uh, because sometimes you can have a really morose and heart-wrenching event, and then the next minute you can have a really joyous event happening in your life. 
or vice versa. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that happens in this book. There's a lot of things. I'm glad I'm keeping it short because no way could I keep up with everything. I don't want to detail it and I don't want to do spoilers. Um, so there are a few revelations that are finally made as Grimjack tries to save his relationship with Abby. Yes, they are going through some issues. Um, Grimjack is kind of distancing himself from her uh, for her sake, for her safety, so that she doesn't feel uh, any pain or agony if he, something happens to him. Uh, so he, he's having a rough time with Abby. Uh, and it seems like every time he thinks about mending the growing rift between them, the more stuff happens to keep them apart. Usually he goes, hey, Abs, and then he gets a ding, you have a quest alert. And he's like, oh, man, not again. Can I catch a break? And then, no, he can't. He really can't because they are getting towards the end of the story arc. It's coming. Like it or not, you've got one more. One more book. Okay? So, you know, things happen to keep them apart. Meanwhile, outside of the soap opera that is Abby and Jack's life, things are looking bad overall for the Crimson Alliance. Uh, for example, they have to figure out how to break into an unsiegeable city and then break into another part of the city that can't be broken into at all and then maybe do something to force Thanatos uh, to yet another hidey hole that will, will kind of pen him in and back him up to a place that he can't, can't go any further from. Um, the, the story is totally unrelenting and, and the only break that it seems like the heroes get is when they decide to like go build some houses for fun. Well, I mean, really, it was for some refugees to have homes, too. And I, and I suppose, the other why, otherwise, the team go forward at, like, this breakneck speed. So it seems like Jack is just getting whittled down piece by piece by piece by the responsibility he bears. It is really taxing him mentally and spiritually. Physically, too, but the physical part, that comes, that, that comes together better for him than anything else. Emotionally and spiritually, he's just, he's on his last legs. So, like I say, we're definitely coming to the end of the series. The tensions are mounting exponentially. Honestly, I don't think everybody's going to make it out of the series alive. Um, we'll have to see. I, I don't know. I don't know if we get any kind of a happy ending. I don't know if we get an ending. I don't know if we get a very dark ending. I don't know. I don't think James Hunter's decided that yet either. I think that right now, uh, it's all much in flux. I don't know how much he's got written. Uh, he might have the whole thing done for all I know. He might not have a page done so far. But all I know is, is that at this point, it feels like anything can happen. It's like Wednesday in the Mickey Mouse Club show. Anything can happen day. That's what it's like here. Anything can happen. It can go right, can go wrong. It can be a horrible mess. It can be just devastating or it can be uplifting. I don't know, but I do know that it's coming soon. So read this and then get yourself caught up if you haven't and then read this. Um, because when you get to the ending, you're going to want to get it as soon as possible. And you don't want to be like, I don't remember this happening or that happened. What, where am I at in the story? You want to get to it as fast as possible. Just kill it. Because this one here, it's, it's, it was fantastic. I was just like, the whole time, I was on the edge of my seat. Um, so, I don't know. I don't think we're going to get, get a big happy ending. Though. I don't think everybody's going to make it out alive. Um, if I had money, I got, I got three bucks. Um, I'm going to say that somebody dies. And I don't want to say who because I don't want to influence James. <laughs> if he watches these reviews, I don't want him to hear who I think it's going to be. Um, because then if he does, and he's like, well, I'll get three bucks. I'm, oh, no, I can't afford that. I'm a poor guy. So anyway, Armin, I was getting to the narration. Armin Taylor um, continues crafting a voc vocally visual world that is scarily impressive. Um, from Hunter's fingertips to Taylor's lips, this story is told like a Grecian myth around a campfire. I like Taylor's style. I don't know what else to say. It's gripping, and it brings to life every character that he plays. Um, and, and, you know, it's funny because I can listen to Armin do this series, and then I can jump over to, like, Chris Carnes, um, where he, he does narration there. And sometimes there is a little bit of a crossover between a voice here or there. Like, there's only, like, one time I can say, that's Cutter talking in the other book. And it's fine. It's It's fine. But I don't hear that anything, and I don't hear that for anything else other than, like, if he's using his regular voice, you can say, well, that's Jack. But that just sounds like it's Armin's regular, normal talking voice. Um, 
he really does his best to keep everything separate. Um, and I think probably, if, if you want to know my favorite character um, voice that he does, it's Arat um, from the Carney book. Arat is just the way he does his stuff is so funny. And it, I don't think it would work as well on a page as it does vocally. And for me, in, in VGO, I, I think that Taylor really nails Cutter. I, think, I love Cutter's voice because to me, I always get like, Cutter has this cocky... Um, Mick Jagger style swag about him, the way he does stuff. I, I don't see Keith Richards at all. I, I see, you know, the bobbing of the head and the, and the walk and everything about him just it, it just tells me he is Mick Jagger, uh, especially the way he talks. Um, but I think Armin just he does everything he can to make that story come to life, and I think he succeeds one hundred percent of the time. Uh, you know, he, he's one of these guys that like you're like. We're lucky to have him in this business because he, he really does do well. Um, final score, 8.5 stars. I don't know where it's heading, but the finale is going to be absolutely killer. I've got no doubt about that. I can say I don't know what's happening. I don't have a main line to James Hunter. We don't talk on the phone. We don't we don't send each other little heart-to-heart -heart emails and stuff like that. Um, all I know is, is that it's going to be one hell of a ride, and it's going to be a massive conclusion. I, I don't think you're going to see some of the stuff coming that he's going to do. I think he's going to flip your expectations. I, I think that, um, for example, I think Thanatos and Abby are going to get married. Yep, yep. And, uh, you know, who knows? We'll see. We will see. So, anyway, I, I think that you just have to kind of wait and see what's going to happen but it's happening soon. So get this book, get caught up, keep it in mind because the next book will be out, I'm sure, shortly. So enjoy it. It's worth it. 8.5 stars. Well, I hate to say it, gang, that is the end of the show. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. We, as always, appreciate you taking the time to watch or listen to the show below. If you want to support us, you can like the Lit RPG, pace, the Lit RPG Podcast Facebook page or the YouTube page, or just share and like this video. I really hope you've enjoyed the show. I'm hoping you're liking the new format where I'm kind of keeping it more condensed and fast-paced and just going along. I'm trying really, really hard not to go off on a rant, uh, although I probably know I probably did that once or twice already without even thinking about it. So please leave suggestions in the comment section below. Feel free to tell me whatever you like. I enjoy the feedback. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Uh, and so, as always, thank you. Leave a review whenever you can, and keep listening.